like to start off with a small scripture. Verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so has I loved you. Continue there ye my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that the joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. The reason why I read that scripture it sums up about three people who are very special in my life. And I may get teary-eyed at a point because they were so special to me. And that two first people I talked about is uh, Pastor Abel Holzbus and Althea Holzbus, who were a pastor in my church where I started. When I first became a Christian, I didn't know what a Christian should be, was, and what I thought, as I said the Lord's Prayer, I figured, okay, that's it, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good. And how little did I know at 16 years old? <laughs> I was, didn't know about trials, temptation, <laughs> didn't know any of that. I went four months without going to a church because I didn't think I had to, because I think, well, I said the prayer, that's it, I'm good. I was wrong. <laughs> And uh, so my brother, my older brother, went to this church. It was Emmanuel Assembly got over there in Palmer Avenue. And uh, he went there in the morning. I didn't want to go. I didn't think I needed it. And uh, so the pastor's wife, Althea, drove my brother home. And he seen me out in the front yard doing work. And she wanted me to come. They had a Sunday night service. It was prayer and praise night. So after couple minutes, she kept on me to come, so I agreed, and I went. And boy, was I in for a surprise. As we went to the service and everything, I remember they had an altar call, call after we praise and worship and devotion. They had an altar call, come up and pray and, and praise God and stuff. And I, I went up to the altar and knelt down to this lady, and oh my gosh, when the praise started, she was praising God, scared the daylights out of me. All of a sudden, it was, praise the Lord, thank you. And I was right next to this woman, and I did not know. <laughs> but her name was Anna Stein, and she was a wonderful lady who loved the Lord. And uh, she was another one that I spent a lot of time with, fellowship with, and she also you know, strengthened my faith and love for Christ. Now, this thing, I went to the church uh, second week, and by the third week, the pastor and his wife offered me and my brother come back for a Sunday dinner right after church, because that was their thing on Sundays. And uh, I was only about three weeks after I started going there. And uh, just their love for Christ and her love for the people in the church drew me to them. I want to know more. I want to learn more. And they've seen this. They even told me they've seen this in me. I, I had a hunger. Now, I get the taste of all this faith and praise, and I'm, I got a taste, and my hunger just started from there on in. And uh, after a while, then they started youth group, which was back then, and, and Assemblies of God was called CAs where I met my wonderful wife. Of course, we didn't start dating until later on, <laughs> down the road. <laughs> but hold on the story. <laughs> so they seen this in me, and I wanted to grow, so I started in the youth group. And then uh, as time went on, we had this program, which is like Boy Scouts. It's called Roar Rangers. So... I started that. We started the, that group up because they already had missionettes and wanted something to do with the boys. And they what, what they called as Royal Rangers, so I started that. Then uh, as that started and uh, things went on, I became a Sunday school teacher. After I was over the age of 18, you go upstairs for the normal Bible study. And then uh, 
that came along. And then as things went on, my mother sold the house. I had to get out. And so I moved in with some friends, and that wasn't working out very well. And Althea and Abe, the pastors, they asked me, you know, because I told them, and they said, well, why don't you move in with us? Because they had extra rooms. I was downstairs, my own bathroom and everything. And uh, that's where things started to get uh, very interesting. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. When I was home, everything was done for me. Because my mom was home. She didn't have to work. Everything was done. That pastor and his wife both worked, plus took care of the church. And uh, that's when I think, saw, um, excuse me, saw what a pastor goes through on a day-to-day basis with calls at night, people with marital problems, people with drug problems, and, you know, I even went to hospitals with him because he was a clergyman, and, he would see, and I started going with him to the hospitals and stuff. And uh, he, I remember when I got my job, I was, I was working, and he had this thing about beds being made in the morning. Now, to me, I'm a guy. I figured, what's the sense? No one's going to see it. I'm the only one in the room. I didn't know this. This was all new to me. So I came home one day, and I opened the door, and she's standing at the top of the stairs, and she goes, William, your bed's not made. I said, yeah. Uh. She says, beds get made in the morning. I uh, wasn't aware of that, but I didn't think it was a problem because I'm only going to sleep in it again. <laughs> no one's going to see. That didn't work well. I had to run downstairs and make that bed. And every day, I opened the door, and there she was at the top of the stairs. Pill your beds. I would shoot downstairs and make that bed. And uh, she also had a thing about etiquette, as I remember. She said, set the table. So I set the table. It was not right. I didn't put the fork, spoons, plates, and, and I think it was the glasses go on one side and spoons, forks go on the other. I don't remember how it went now. I don't do that much anymore. So... <laughs> She so I set the table. She comes in. William, what? It's not set right. I says, what do you mean? It's, forks go here, the knife and spoons, the vacuum. <laughs> so we went out around the table, and she did that every time with me for dinner to make sure I knew it. So by the end of two weeks, I pretty much got everything together. Living with a pastor and his wife was a totally different experience. Not having things done for me, I had to do it myself, and that's pretty much how they helped me get along. And uh, I thank them both for it. But as things went on, being with, he taught me a lot of things, and uh, they started a rest home a ministry. And uh, that started. And then uh, on Sunday night service, he got me up there since I was living with them to do opening with uh, worship, uh, announcements. So I started really getting into the church and how it worked, and I had to be in a suit. Back then, there was no casual wear because they were old-school pastors, and you dressed appropriate. There was no hats in church. You came in with a hat, you took it off. You go to church, since I was up there, I had to be in a suit. So I wore a suit all day Sunday. And uh, that's how I learned. There was no casual wear, and they made me aware of that. It says, you're an example to the church. You're being up there now. Now you got, so I start wearing a suit, you know, all day Sunday. There was no, of course, I would change my shirt, especially if it was hot, but basically the suit went on. And uh, soon after that, I was Sunday school teacher. Now I became the youth group leader. And then uh, after that, I started preaching in the rest homes with them. Every other week or every two weeks, 
you know, someone different, either them or me, would go up. So I started preaching at rest homes and taking on a lot of responsibility. And I looked back and seeing that so much that I did in my hunger for Christ was so much. And I was even an usher on days. I had this pen and then I was usher. So I did a lot of things in the church because I was helping them out. I was living with them and they were training me. And uh, God put me through a lot of things. And uh, I had to learn just their faith and their love transformed onto me and taught me you know, what having faith is. And if you have faith in Christ, anything that the enemy is going to throw at you won't matter because your faith is in him. And my faith was in him. And I went through a lot of things. I'm surprised I'm uh, the way I am. I wasn't always a Christian, didn't grow in a Christian home, but things were very interesting for a time there. And then there was a time they, uh, they did move away. They started a new church down in uh, North Carolina. And uh, that's when things started to fall apart. I felt alone. I felt just, I don't know, I couldn't explain it. I felt part of me was ripped out. And it was a hard time dealing with that. And I was dating my wife then, and uh, she helped me through it. And uh, it was a very hard time for me. And uh, I just thank God for them both. And uh, where he led me in these past years. And I've shared a lot with uh, Pastor Mike and Tiffany. And they felt that the Lord wanted me to start preaching again and get back and to where they, they know God's leading me somewhere and they wanted me. So I shared with them what I did and they felt this thing, the need that I need to start getting back to that and uh, being with God, his word, and start being in front of people. And it's very nerve-wracking when you're up here and all eyes are on you. And you get nervous and you get tongue-tied like I do. And it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And it, back then when I was younger, it was, it was more easier for me. I was more bolder. I had people looking at me didn't matter. And uh, since I've been out of that for about 30 years, as long as I've been married, a little before that, I stopped doing that because we changed churches and things weren't working out. The new pastor that came in after they left, we did not see eye to eye. And uh, so we changed churches and I didn't do that anymore in 30 years of being married, which that was an experience in itself. I had to learn a lot then too. <laughs> My wife will tell you, I wasn't easy to get along with in the beginning. <laughs> Hitting all my little quirks. But we had faith in Christ. We were both saved, so we got we worked things out. We didn't think, oh, it was divorce or something like that. That would never enter our minds. It was the love we had for Christ and the love that we share with each other kept us together. And uh, it's uh, basically that part. There is a beginning to this testimony. Later on, I might share that with you all and <laughs> see where that goes. That's for another time. Uh, I'd like to uh, close out in prayer. And uh, if anyone likes to, needs prayer or anything, get together in small groups and pray for each other. And, uh, Maureen's here. If you need any special prayer, she'll be happy to pray for you. And after this, we are all dismissed. Lord, we thank you for this message, Lord God, and I just thank you for the people you bring in my life, Lord God. And uh, we just ask that you bless you tonight, Lord, one of us, Lord God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.